All right, obstetric uh, fistula is a hole between the birth canal and bladder or rectum caused by prolonged obstructed labor without access to timely, high-quality medical treatment. It leaves women and girls leaking urine, feces, or both, and often leads to chronic medical problems, depression, social isolation, and deepening poverty. 90% uh, percent of pregnancies involving uh, fistula end up in stillbirth. Um, so this is International Day to End Obstetric uh, Fistula. This is a very, very important day. Um, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Dry by Stephanie Linus. I think that's the only movie she's, she's produced. But it's one of the most impactful movies when it comes to, um, what's it called, stories, telling our stories. Because again, she took it from the angle of the, the girl child, you know, especially in the north where they are married off early. Because again, sometimes when, uh, but that was vesicle vaginal fistula. It wasn't obstetric fistula. So I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> but maybe Norma will help me out if you know the difference. But um, I love that movie so much because it reminded a lot of people, the hazards of early childhood pregnancy and all of that, because most women, because their pelvics are not mature enough to hold the baby when they're trying to give birth, a lot of complications happen that they now need to down do surgical correction. And I remember that after that movie, she was able to get a lot of medical doctors, you know, volunteer. They flew them from outside of the country en masse to come um, perform surgeries on the young girls. You know, um, any woman that has carried pregnancy, you'd understand that is not a, it's not an easy feat, and it comes with different complications for different women. So I, I, I like to understand what the obstetric fistula is about. But no ma hey, that's you. Oh well, I, I'm not a medical personnel, so <laughs> <laughs> I may not be able to do justice to that. But basically, whatever affects women, I mean, it's 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 something to what paying attention to, because women are their are their carriers. They have the they are the ones who bear the brunt of both uh, the pe pregnancy as well as delivery. So whether it's obstetrics or vaginal, already it's a, it's a cause for concern, and it's a beautiful day to pay attention to this fact that uh, women do suffer obstetric fistula as well as vaginal fistula. So whichever one it is, it's important that women are paid attention to in this regard and that help is 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 available. I think there's also need for a lot of um, awareness to go out in form of training to help people to know that these things are possible. That also uh, support groups can come out of this situation because a lot of women are actually suffering and um, suffering in silence. And it would be an opportunity to tell to let them know that there is help, there's support. You are not alone in what you're going through, and um, you don't have to go through it by yourself. There are people who can hold your hand and, you know, see you through the process. So it's a good one, and um, I, I hope that the right people are also paying attention and doing the need needful, as well as we as individuals paying attention to the next person beside us just to know that they're okay through the process. Absolutely. Um, all right, so what did you find for us in the news, Norma? All right, so in, in the spirit of what's in the news, I did find um, something interesting, you know, for those who may be planning to come to the UK for their study or to, to get a study visa or something. The breaking news as we have it today is that the UK has banned Nigerian students and other countries from bringing family. And this would take effect from January the January in 2024. So they have placed a law that would see that Nigerian students and others studying in the UK can no longer bring families as dependent except on that specific 
circumstances. And this is to, um, to bring immigration into um, the, uh, which stands at about 1 million down. Between 2019 and 2023, there has been a massive, massive uh, exodus from Nigeria into the UK and people bringing in their families. And the new rule now says that it will remove the permission for international students to switch out of the students' routes into work routes before their studies have been completed to prevent the misuse of the visa system. They want to be able to uh, provide this uh, for those who really need it and to crack down on unscrupulous education agents who continue to make uh, use of inappropriate applications to sell immigration and not education. So the emphasis is actually on education and quite a number of UK uh, people who have come in as students who came in under the guise of uh, study visa now come in and then find avenue to get a job. And some of them even completely abandoned the study program. And this is becoming something that is worrisome because now the Home Secretary, Suela Braverman, had recently made statements uh, concerning the unexpected rise and the fact that the increase has made the government's uh, commitment to lower net migration to the UK. So Nigeria alone, you can imagine, between 20, uh, 2019, Nigerians um, had over 50, about 59,053 Nigerian students brought in about 60,923 relatives. So I think the UK is now beginning to to crack down on that and say, you know what, we have to be able to make sure that uh, we don't suffer in the process of bringing in, yes, we can bring in people, that, but we're going to limit it because now people are using that as an escape route and they do not they do not want that anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that, that for, for a lot of people, it's going to be a challenge because some people who genuinely are coming for study, and who can have their family come over with them, um, that would be uh, a challenge for them. And I think it's also an important uh, a reminder of the fact that in Nigeria, we need to get our education system on, you know, back on track. And hopefully the new government, as it comes in, will probably have a program, we're hoping that they will have a program that will help the Nigerian education system to, to, to be at par with what the standard globally and um, enable people to oh, not me, have to... Let me say that, the Mama, this is not about education, right? It's not about the standard of education. I think it's more of the standard of living in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Because why would I need to carry my family members? Because the complaint is that... Yeah, you, you students, can go to school and Yes, but the number of students are less way 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 lesser than the number of their dependents that are coming with them <laughs> just like you know i want to go and study i carry 500 people well, that follow me so wait wait now so i'm trying to tell well, you that it's not about the quality of the education that is the problem now you are free to go to school you can go to school alone and come back alone but people are using school as an avenue to migrate out of the country and so migrate, that, their uh, families. Yes, and migrate their families right so i mean it's not so if we are even speaking to our government we're asking and demanding that they give a better life you know, here, because if I have a better livelihood here and everything, or a better uh, standard of living, I don't mind leaving my children behind. If I want to go and get quality education, no problem. I'll go and then I'll come back yeah. and continue working. So the reason people are taking all the, uh, what's it called, <laughs> the entire clan, you know, when they're going to some, school, some people using don't even that, they yes. don't really want to go to school, but like, that is the because, only option. Yes, it's an option. Yeah. So therefore, they will decide but to if, go to if school. If we improve the standard yeah. of living here in Nigeria, Right, I have a I have a I'm, feeling absolutely. that the migration issues will stop. So it's not really about even improving our education. That's yeah. why I was just trying to go there. No, oh, I, what I meant, yeah, education is part of it. A lot of people who are traveling, they have education in mind. They also have the standard of living is another aspect to it. I just used the opportunity to draw attention to what we have discussed. Uh, discussed time without number concerning uh, um, 
the state of education in Nigeria. So I'll just join attention to that. Of course, the standard of living is also a huge part of it and remains to, to, to get to that point where it is globally accepted. Because even some of these people, when they go to these countries to study, they still believe that your standard of education does not measure up. And then you still have to take several exams or whatever it is to be able to, 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 to meet up with the standard there. Yeah, so I just wanted to use that opportunity to draw attention to that. Well, it's good to draw attention. <laughs> so my what's in the news? Do you have a story for us? Um, some prophetess. Okay, go ahead, quickly. Okay, I have prophetess Ezenekwe, mm -hmm. who says, if you share bills equally with your woman, then be ready to share in submission. I don't really know how I feel about this. Um, there was a video of her um, saying it, but that is it, this what we're uh, now teaching people? That uh, since since uh, since you want to share, she, she can also share chores the and submission all and all of that. I, I don't think that's the background that we were raised with, but hey. So what do you want to say now? Like. I don't agree with it. It's just what I found in the so news. So what do you not agree with? That you can I pay the bill or you can pay the bill, which is what? I don't think that the fact that they're sharing the bills means that you should share in the submission. Mm. Because every both partners are going to be submissive, you know, at, at their capacity. It's not a fight that, oh, because I'm contributing to the bills, so therefore you should cook mm. as a man. I'm not saying that you shouldn't cook as the man. Like, it's not, I don't know. It's, it's Yes, it's not, it's not fight mm. that, oh, I'm contributing to bills, so therefore, or are you two, you have to change the child's diaper. As in, it's now it's like a chore, like you're now dividing this, it. Do this, or you uh, do you do must do this one. I, do, I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I'm connected. Okay. I get you, I get you. <laughs> so I, I, I am here to tell you without fear of contradiction, if you are dating a woman who is always sharing her dance and twerk videos on her Facebook slash Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, there are two things involved. One, she is marketing herself using her body. Two, which is much more serious, is that you are dating a, I think, fool or something, who has nothing else to offer the world but her body. When the head is empty, the body keeps vibrating to find equilibrium. Oh, I am <laughs> not asking you to leave her. Stay around as you continue to look for a serious woman uh, who can give you bright kids. Remember, kids inherit brains of their mothers. Oh, Lord have mercy. From you mostly, <laughs> from you mostly is personality, your forehead and your nose at most. Hey, whoa. Wow. This woman went. <laughs> but I kind of like, kind of like, you know what? I will not say what I think. Hey. I got a break. No, please. You have <laughs> no. to say it. I want Uti to be back. Hmm. Let's go on a break so that we can discuss the matter. Because I think it's tied to what I'm saying. That even this, your story is tied. So hmm. we, we'll tie all of them together. Stay with us. We'll be right back.